Everybody lift your sword in the air. Everyone say, this is the word of God. That was brought forth from the spirit realm. Recorded that I may learn. So I don't get burned. In Jesus' name. <laughs> Hallelujah. Would you turn to Genesis chapter 1? Genesis chapter 1, it's the first book. <laughs> For some of us who haven't picked up a Bible in a long time. Glory. Genesis 1, verse 26. Is everybody there? Let's speak it together. It says, Then God said, Let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Now, what has dominion over all of these things? Man. Now, wait a minute. It says man in whose image? God, not in his own image. Let's go to the next verse. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created man, created him. Male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Again, we see here that God said, I'm going to bring forth a creation that is in my image and in my likeness of the Creator. In other words, we would carry characters and attributes according to God himself. He's the one who gives. He shares himself with love. So he created me and you in his image, in the original state. He created Adam and Eve in his image and in his likeness. And he is the one who gives, doesn't he? So what he did is he gave of himself. You know, he, he's the one who gives. He shared himself with love and with good things that promote joy, which is love. Now, again, I want to share something very vitally important, so grab hold of this. Love is his substance to man. Love is his substance to man. And man receives God's love through the substance of faith. Is everybody with me? God, his substance to man is love. That's why he created me and you. So we receive this love through what we call the substance of faith we are able to receive. It's a substance that's mixed then, isn't it? Now, in this, the substance that God takes from the spirit realm, okay, which is known as love, into the natural realm. And we receive it by faith. Amen. So in this, we are created to know him, we are created to love him and know his love, and we are created to share him. Has everybody got it? And we share him by allowing him, we, by allowing him to express himself through us, don't we? Again, his substance is love to man. Amen? We receive his substance by faith, the substance that takes from the spirit 
and brings into the natural. We are created to know him, love him, and share him. And in this, his response to me and you is, you please me. And everybody got this. So when we, when we know him, love him, and share him, his response to me and you is, you please me. You please me. So to please him is a response from all creation. You and I were created to please God. Yesterday morning we had a meeting, and one of the things that was expressed was about pleasing him. And, and, and the Holy Spirit really wanted to expound on, on this today in this area of pleasing God. Now, again, it was a part of us already when we were created. Now, remember, we were created before we were created here. We were created before we were brought here. We were first created. Amen? So in this first creation, when God, we created, when, when we were in God from the beginning, in God we were, and in this, there was al already an, an, an attribute in us, a desire in us to please him. That was already embedded in us. That was a part of our creation is to please God. That's what it's about. And when we don't please him, we please self, and we try to get fulfillment from everything else. TV, video games, all of these things that are out there. People get engulfed themselves in comic books and even books trying to find fulfillment. But you and I were created in the other realm, the unseen realm, to please God. Does everybody got it? We had a desire to please him. So the key to pleasing God is to know him. Because without knowing him, how can you please him? Amen. This is still too tweaked. Without knowing him, you can't please him. To please him is the response of all creation to the Father the moment you were brought forth in God. I said in God, not brought forth here. The moment you were brought forth in God, there was already a part of you that says, I want to please you. Why? Because you want to know him. As a matter of fact, you did know him. And because you did know him, you desired to please him. Amen? Is everybody okay? Hallelujah. Psalm 102. Psalm 102. In verse 18. Hallelujah. Psalm 102, verse 18. Is everybody there? Is everybody cool? You hip? You down? <laughs> Praise God. It's time to get up now. <laughs> Psalm 102, verse 18. Let's read it together. This will be written for the generation to come that a people yet to be created may praise the Lord. Now, does praising him please him? Remember, when the word says, I know that we have a tendency to automatically accept that when the word says create, it's always in this realm. And there is a creation in this realm. But as for spirit, we were first created in the unseen realm, not this realm. So we were actually brought forth, right, in the unseen realm. We were brought forth in God. When he chose you, he brought you forth. And in this bringing of forth, he put in you a desire to please him because you knew him. 
of course, the moment you were conceived in this realm, you forgot where you came from. All memory, everything was removed from you. So you're on a search of who am I, why am I here, and where am I going? The problem is, is everybody searches everything else but God. And then they become what they intake. Amen? In verse 19, it says, For he looked down from the height of his sanctuary, from heaven the Lord viewed the earth, to hear the groaning of the prisoner, to release those appointed to death, to declare the name of the Lord in Zion. And in his praise, Jerusalem, when the peoples are gathered together and the kingdoms to serve the Lord. Okay, grab hold of this. You were brought forth, what we call created, in the unseen realm to please him. You were sent forth in the mo to be, come to the place where you are born again to serve him. So everybody got it? So you are, now in this, well, we'll talk a little bit more about it. So we are created to praise, an attribute of relationship, isn't it? Amen? Praise is an attribute of relationship. We are created, and in this created, we are created to please God. So in the unseen realm, and again, we were born again to serve God. We were created in him before we came. In the natural realm or in the physical realm, we are sent. So understand that in this, in this realm that we're in, God was waiting for us to become born again, to be restored to the original state of what we were created for. Amen? So that we would be pleasing to him because the key to pleasing God is relationship. Without relationship, you can't please him. In other words, relationship is associated with knowing him. He wants you to know him more than anything. He doesn't want you to serve him. He wants you to know him. Without knowing him, you cannot serve him. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, when man fell, when Adam and Eve fell, because we know that Adam and Eve was created in the image and likeness of God, right? When they fell, the fall of man created an attitude of pleasing self. No more pleasing God. In the garden, Adam and Eve desired to please God, right? Because they, they were brought forth in his image and likeness. There was no tainting, no contamination. God sent them forth into the natural realm. Neither one of them came through a womb. They came directly from the throne of God. Placed into a, a garden of protection. Where God walked with them, talked with them face to face. They saw him. They re had relationship with him. But of course, there was another voice in the garden. Of course, there was a multiple voices, but I'm not going to get into all that today. But there was another voice in the garden called self. He was known as the serpent. Because he was once light and walked away from light and became dark. So darkness actually came from light. So in this when Adam and Eve fell, the fall of man created an attitude of pleasing self instead of pleasing God. Self is a character of darkness, the offspring of the serpent. So from that point on, the offsprings of the serpent were now being established through man's creation that was going to multiply. So self was now birthed. It was, self was not birthed by God, self was birthed by darkness. So now there's that desire, so when you and I are brought into this realm, we have a desire to please self. And if you die in that condition, you go to hell. Hello? 
Why? Because that means you serve the Father, not above, but from beneath. And who you serve when you die is where you go. People don't realize that. So in this, self was birthed by the fall of Adam and Eve because the voice of the serpent, Eve accepted. The first thing Eve did was deceived her husband because she was lied to and then she lied. So everybody got it. Why? Because that's the character of self, the offspring of the serpent. Go to Jeremiah 42. What is the key to pleasing God? Relationship. And that means to what? Know Him. Jeremiah 42. See, you can only serve self so long. You can only serve darkness so long to where it gets disgusting. There is no more fulfillment. The world can no longer fulfill you. And then people try to drown themselves in drugs and alcohol and lust and all kinds of things that the world has to offer. But it, that's all it's doing is preventing the area of knowing God and pleasing Him. In Jeremiah 42 and verse 1. Would you read it with me? Now all the captains of the forces, Joan, son of Karah, Jezariah, the son of Hashai, and all the people from the least to the greatest came near. And said to Jeremiah the prophet, Please let our petition be accepted to you and pray for us to the Lord your God. The Lord who? Your God. For this remnant, since we are left but a few of many, as you can see, that the Lord your God may show us the way in which we should walk and the thing we should do. So obviously they had no relationship. Then Jeremiah the prophet said to them, I have heard indeed, I will pray to the Lord your God <laughs> according to your words. And it shall be that whatever the Lord answers you, I will declare it to you. I will keep nothing back from you. So they said to Jeremiah, let the Lord be a true and faithful witness between us. If we do not do according to everything which the Lord your God sends us by you. Whether it is pleasing or displeasing, we will obey the voice of the Lord our God to whom we sent you, that it may be well with us when we obey the voice of the Lord our God. And it happened after ten days that the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah, and he called Joanna, the son of Kariah, and all the captains of the forces which were with him, and all the people from the least even to the greatest. And said to them, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, to whom you sent me to present your petition before him. If you will still remain in this land, then I will build you and not pull you down. And I will plant and not pluck you up. For I will relent concerning the disaster that I have brought upon you. Do not be fearful, the king of Babylon. The word Babylon represents the ruler of the earth, Babylon. It's also known as Egypt. And of whom you are afraid. Do not be afraid of him, says the Lord, for I am with you to save you and to deliver you from his hand. And I will show you mercy that he may have mercy on you and cause you to return to your land. But if you say... We will not dwell in this land, disobeying the voice of the Lord your God, and saying no, but we will go to the land of what? Egypt, where we shall see no war, nor hear the sound of the trumpet, nor hunger for the bread, and there we will dwell. Then hear now the word of the Lord. 
O remnant of Judah. Thus is the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel. If you wholly set your faces to enter Egypt and go to dwell there, then it shall be that the sword which you feared shall overtake you there in the land of Egypt. The famine which you were afraid of shall follow close after you there in Egypt, and there you shall die. Now listen. Egypt represents the world. What he's saying, look it. The only way that you're going to be rescued is to follow me. That's it. The world has nothing to offer you but death. That's it. Amen. He says, if you go to the world, you'll die. But if you follow my voice, you'll live. Because dark, but the thing is, is darkness keeps us from God. And all the characteristics and the attributes of the world which promotes and feeds self. Why? Because when we are only living to please self, we cannot please God. Isaiah 59. Is everybody there? Isaiah 59, verse 1. Anybody ever tell you they just don't feel like doing something? <laughs> you know what they're doing? They're pleasing self. Oh, I just don't feel like doing this. Oh, I just don't feel like doing that. People in that condition are the most dangerous people. Because if they live by how they feel, they eventually will betray you. Why? Because they'll take heed of the voice of the stranger and betray you. In verse 1, let's speak it together. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save nor his ear heavy that it cannot hear. But your iniquities is associated. Okay, now your iniquities have what? Separated you from your God, and your sins have hidden his face from you, so that he will not hear. For your hands are defiled with blood, and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies, and your tongue have muttered perversity. So again, we see iniquities, which is associated with Actions and fellowship with darkness. Iniquities are uh, basically the area where you are pleasing self instead of pleasing God. So you're choosing to do what you feel like doing instead of what God is telling you to do. So these iniquities separate us from pleasing God. And what it does is it promotes pleasing self instead of God. And it separates us from relationship with him. And then we don't know him. Amen? Go to Jeremiah chapter 1. Remember, before you were sent into this realm, you lived to please him. But the enemy will do everything he can from prevent you from having a desire to please him so you will not return home. Hallelujah. Now, of course, you can say, well, I just don't believe that. And that's just a spirit in you that's called unbelief and rebellion. <laughs> and he's still preventing you then from having a relationship and pleasing God. See, everybody thinks so many times that, that their own voice, whatever they hear is of them. But that's not true. And if you can't discern what voice you're hearing, whether it's promoting self or promoting pleasing him, we'll always be deceived then if we cannot discern. Amen? Is everybody okay? 
Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 4. Would you read it with me, please? Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I what? Woohoo! Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Why? Because you were with him. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to the nations. Now, I want you to know that he's not only speaking to Jeremiah, but he's speaking to me and you because the spirit of prophecy is upon those who decree Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Then I said, O Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a youth. But the Lord said to me, do not say I am a youth. Now remember, he was born in iniquity, wasn't he? He was born in promoting self. The first thing he was saying is, Lord, I can't say those things because of fear. And he says, I'm surprised he didn't say who told you that. <laughs> but he says, don't say I am a youth. Do not say I am a youth. What was he doing? He was correcting him. Get your eyes off yourself. For you shall go to whom I send you, and whatever I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of their faces, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. See, I have this day set you over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down, to destroy and throw down, to build and to plant. That's what we're to do. Does everybody got it? This is what we are to do. This is our call. This is what we're to do. We're to tear down. He's not talking about the things that are natural. He's talking about Satan's kingdom. Remember, Jesus was brought forth that he would destroy Satan's kingdom. Amen? Is everybody okay? Praise God. So he says, I knew you before you were in the womb. Because we were in him before we came or we were sent. We came from him, sent into this realm on a military mission. And the military mission is to destroy Satan's kingdom. Amen. We are called to battle. Our purpose is to destroy Satan's kingdom. And our destiny is to infiltrate the world system with the talents and abilities God's given us. So grab hold of this now. Because of the fall, and God wanted to restore, Jesus had to put on self. God himself put on self to come into this realm. Is everybody with me? Now, he was not born in iniquity because his father was not the serpent. His father is God because he is God. Your father, my father, when we were of the world, was the serpent. We were born in his image, not in God's image. You are born again in God's image and likeness. Has everybody got it? So in this, Jesus put on self. He put on father. He came into this realm. And when he hung on the cross, he took all the characters and attributes of darkness of self. Has everybody got it? When he took all of our sins and iniquities, he took all, he put on self. He became the offspring of the serpent himself. That's what allowed him to get to hell. <laughs> so he took man's sins and all the character and all of darkness, all the attributes and character of self, which you fight with every day. He took it and nailed it on the cross. So everybody got it? So he, he had to put on self himself to come in here. He nailed to the cross for the exchange of himself for our self so we are born again and that's when Jesus told Nicodemus 
And Nicodemus asked him, how, how, how are you going to get into this kingdom? He says, you've got to be born again. He says, if you can't be born again, you can't see, nor can you enter the kingdom. So he says, you must be born again. So we see then here, to be born again is to awaken to the original state where we were created before we were sent. So everybody got this? So when you are born again of the Spirit, you are awakened. And one of the things that happens to you is you have a desire to please Him when you didn't have a desire to please Him before because you were awakened in the original state of which you were created before you were sent. Now you say, I want to please you. And you say, I want to know you so I can please you. There's a difference, isn't there? Amen? So when we are born again to awaken to the original state of creation, of pleasing him, and then we are born again in the area of serving him. And that is the divine order. That is the div order. Without pleasing him, you cannot serve him. Serving him doesn't please him. Knowing him pleases him. That's what relationship is. Too many people think that serving God is what pleases him. That's religion. Then they believe if I serve them enough, I'll, 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 I'll get more pleasing to him. No. Serving God does not please him. Knowing him does. See, because if you know him, you're not serving him to please him. You're serving, serving him because you love him. But people think, and this is what the enemy does. I'm telling you, he knows how to twist minds and set people astray. I got to serve God. That's the only way I can please him. No. You can't serve him until you know him. Then you please him. And then you serve him because you love him. Not because you're going to get brownie points. There isn't anything that you can do to gain God's love for you any more than what he loves you. His love for you is unconditional. But because we were created to please him, because we pleased him because we knew him. Now we are born again by the Spirit to go back to the original state of knowing him first, which pleases him. And then we serve him because we love him. Not because of the more I serve him, the more he loves me. No, it's got nothing to do with that. That's a lie from hell. In Romans chapter 1. The key to please is relationship. Verse 18, Romans 1, 18. Let's speak it together. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. Because what may be known of God is manifested in them, for God has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. In other words, everything was created to please him. Because although they knew God, they knew him. Where did they know him? Before they were sent. <laughs> 
And then they, and, and then through the conscience, what we call our conscience, which is through the spirit, there's that desire because of that character because we came from him to want to please him, to want to know him. Man, that was my whole desire. My whole life was, I didn't, I didn't know, I didn't have a desire to please God, but I wanted to know, who am I? Why am I here? And where am I going? And where did I come from? What is this? What's this whole purpose? You know, sometimes you come to a point and it's like, if you erase all of mankind, then you erase all of creation in the universe. The only thing that left is God. And if you try to erase God, then there isn't anything. <laughs> There's nothing. So God is everything. And without him, there is nothing. Whatever the world has to say through theory, they lie. Verse 21, because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful. Everyone say thankful. So they didn't glorify him, nor were they thankful. But because of futile in their thoughts and became futile in their thoughts and their foolish hearts were what darkened darkened darkness brings blindness you can't see in the dark can you so then in this area they were separated from god they were professing to be wise they became fools and changed the glory of the incorruptible god into an image made like corruptible man and birds and four-footed animals and creeping things Therefore, God also gave them up to unclean, uncleanness in the lust of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves who exchanged the truth of God for the lie and worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. So they began to worship creation instead of creator. In other words, there is no excuse. None. Colossians chapter 2. The key to please is relationship. If you don't know him, you won't please him. So everybody got it. Your works do not please him. Knowing him pleases him. See, even in relationship, I'll never forget when the Lord said to me, I want you to go and this is one of the first times he ever sent me somewhere. He said, I want you to go witness to this person. And he was an insurance man. And he had an office. And uh, for auto insurance. And I'm going to make a real long story very short. So anyways, I went there because my insurance ran out and so forth. And just happened I had a coupon come in the mail that day and. So I went, to the, I went to the front door where this guy was in his office and there was a bunch of people in there. I'm thinking, man, how are you going to do this? I opened the door. Within a couple minutes, the place was empty. There was just me and the insurance dude. So I gave, I, I shared with him about the visitation of the Lord I had and so forth and about how God was calling him and so forth and whatever. And, and I left the room. And when I walked out, I got in the car, and the Lord said, nice job. I knew I pleased him. Because everybody got it. But I, I didn't do it to please him. I did it because I love him. And because I obeyed him, it was established more in relationship, which pleases him. So to, the key to pleasing God is relationship. That's all he wants. But the enemy tries to get you in a place where you begin to think you've got to serve him to please him. And what that does is service then begins to separate you from relationship. 
Hallelujah. Did we go where I said we were going? Where are we going? <laughs> Colossians chapter 2. Praise God. Verse 9. Let's speak it. For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And you are what? You are what? Complete. Perfect. In where? In him. Who is the head of all principality and power. So we are complete in him. In him. That's why if you look at the tabernacle of God, there's three chambers, isn't there? Outer court, holy place, most holy place. Where is he trying to get us? Closer into him. Amen? So that we're complete. Closer into him. See, God doesn't live in your life. You live in his. When you try to live your life, he stands away and you walk away from his life. We live in his life. He doesn't live in ours. Amen. In verse 11, it says, In him you were also circumcised with circumcision made without hands by putting off the body of sins of the flesh, which is associated with self, by the circumcision of Christ, buried with him in baptism, which you also were raised with him through faith in the working of God who raised him from the dead. You being dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he made alive together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, having wiped out the handwritten writing of the requirements that was against us, which was contrary to us. And he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross, having disarmed principalities and powers. He made a public spectacle of and triumphing over them in it. So let no one judge you in the food or drink or regarding a festival or new moon or Sabbath, which are a shadow of the things to come. But the substance is Christ. In other words, now the substance is him expressing himself through you. Is everybody all right? Let no one cheat you of your reward, taking delight in false humility and worship of angels, intruding into those things which he has not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind, and not a holding fast to the head, from whom all the body, nourished and knit together by joints and ligaments, grows with the increase that is from God. Again, the substance of Christ now is expressed through me and you with relationship and service. We are complete in him, closer to him. The more we are closer to him, the more we are complete in him. Amen? Colossians 1. You don't have far to go. In verse 9. And let's speak it. Colossians 1, verse 9. For this reason, we also, since the day we heard it, did not cease to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that you may walk worthy of the Lord, what? Fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of him. That's relationship, isn't it? Strengthened with all might according to his glorious power for all patience and long suffering with joy. Giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has delivered us from the power of darkness of self and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of his love in whom he has we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by him all things were created that is in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created through him and for him. Fully pleasing. 2 Corinthians 5. Is everybody okay? Are you getting this? Yeah. 
to know him. Wasn't that Paul's desire? That I may know him. Even Moses said, Lord, show me your glory. He shows him his glory. He says, man, I still want to know you. And Moses pleased God, didn't he? Because of relationship. It's not about service. It's about relationship. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 7. Would you speak it with me, please? For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, yes, well, pleased, rather to be absent from the body and be present with the Lord. Therefore, we make it our aim, whether present or absent, to be what? Well, pleasing to him. Why? Because you better know him. We'll look at the next verse. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. I hope you know the judge when you get there. <laughs> and that each one may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. Knowing, therefore, the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are well known to God, and I also trust are well known in your conscience. <laughs> we make it our purpose to please him. Amen? And that is by knowing him in relationship. Go to Titus chapter 2. Titus chapter 2. Is everybody there? Praise God. You know, I got a call from an individual that I've known for many, many years. And, uh, and, and this individual was the one who was always trying to persuade me about Jesus. The problem was is you know, he'd always have drugs on him or booze or whatever. So his persuasion wasn't too good. And then after I got saved and then he got saved, and the problem was is he was never willing to get into fellowship and then abide. And uh, I got a call from somebody and uh, now I grew up with this guy, and uh, and they said he's in trouble. So I called him, and he could only talk for a minute, and hung up. And I knew he was going to try to kill himself. And I began to began to combat and fight and come against the spirit of suicide and so forth. And he called me the next day. He said I was attempting to kill myself. He said then the phone rang and it was you. And I said, well, that was just the hand of God. But in this, that persuasion of fulfilling self is what led him into all of this. And the only thing he kept saying to me, I can't feel God, I can't feel, I said, cut the feeling stuff, man. He is the God of truth, not the God of feeling. You must now receive what he says who you are. And stop allowing the enemy to portray what he says you are. See, when you begin to fulfill self, you're serving darkness. And you're listening to the wrong voice. And he's going to try to prevent you from pleasing God and knowing God. See, he knew the Lord, but walked away because of the fulfillment of self maintained was never able to break off those emotional attachments. Always was looking. And the only thing he said to me is, I just wanted to be happy, so I went back to drinking. I said, how's it working? 
Now you wanted to kill yourself. It doesn't work. The end result of serving self is death. And if in that condition is hell, it truly is. There's only one way home. And that's through Jesus Christ who opened the door so that you and I could be born again and restored back to the original state of pleasing God and serving Him. There isn't any money that will help. Money might buy happiness for a period of time, but it doesn't buy your way into eternity. And Titus chapter 2, verse 6. Likewise, exhort the young men to be sober-minded in all things, showing yourselves to be a pattern of good works and doctrine, showing integrity, reverence, and incorruptibility, sound speech that cannot be condemned, that one who is an opponent may be ashamed, having nothing evil to say of you. Exhort bond servants to be obedient to their own masters, to be well pleasing in all things, and not answering back, not pilfering, but showing all good fidelity, that they may adorn the doctrine of God our Savior in all things. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, and the grace of God is God's plan, isn't it? Teaching us. How can grace be some mystical thing? You know? I've been saved by grace. They think it's a magical or mystical thing. Yes, I don't have to do anything. I'll just go out and continue to feed my flesh and serve self. No. For the grace of God brings salvation appeared to all men. Teaching. Teaching. Why? Because God's plan is to be taught us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts lust, we should live what soberly righteously and godly in the present age looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself his own special people, zealous for good works. To be zealous for good works, you've got to have a relationship. Speak these things. Exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no one despise you or take this away from you. And when I close at Matthew 7, because this is the example. Matthew 7, in verse 21. Hallelujah. Let's speak it together. Matthew 7, verse 21. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. What is the will of the Father? To know him. <laughs> Amen? That's his will. In verse 22, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Why? Be depart from me, you who practice what? Lawlessness. Because they put service before relationship. And because they put service before relationship, they thought their service was establishing the relationship, they thought they could get away with things. 
Does everybody got it? Well, because I do this, 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 and this, I have a relationship with God. No. It's because you know Him and you love Him. You know His character. And then I will declare to them, I never knew you because you practice law. Practicing lawlessness means serving self. Because you chose to serve self, even though you did these things, you thought that these would outweigh because you served me, because you did these things according to my word, according to what is written in the Bible, you did these things. You thought that your service was a relationship. You thought that this service was going to allow you to touch on clean things, to live according to the world, and to please self. Your service has nothing to do with pleasing God. Your relationship does. Amen? Your relationship. That's how many believers fall away from their first love. They would rather love to serve than love him. And they try to make the excuse, well, I love him. That's why I serve him. But they don't know him because they practice lawlessness. The only thing they're doing is serving self. Not the Lord. Amen? And you're going to see more and more of this manifest. Only those who know him. Those who know him will do great exploits and receive no glory of self, but give all glory to him. To know him is to love him, to have a relationship, and to serve him because you love him. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. Lord, we never want to come to a place where we walk away from our first love and our relationship with you. And Lord, if we have gotten involved in the area of service instead of relationship, we ask for your forgiveness. And we ask that you restore to us our first love, you. That we maintain that relationship in seeking you every day. The desire to hear from you the desire to see you, the desire to know your character, and the desire to sense your touch. We want to obey in every area. So we take this opportunity and we submit to you our spirit, soul, and body and flesh as a living sacrifice. We cast our cares upon you, for you care for us. And we call on the name above all names, Jesus, who will answer us and show us great and mighty things. And cause us to know you. That you may be glorified. In Jesus name. And everybody said amen.